Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Once again, uh, in the first session, we've seen one of the characteristics of a good test, which is validity. And I'm going to the second part, uh, second characteristics, which will be on reliability. That we can judge whether the test was good considering the point of full reliability. So you may ask yourself, what is reliability? We've seen before that validity, we are just looking uh, to what extent the test uh, measured what it was intended to measure. You've seen different approach of judging, of judging either the test was valid or not. So the second part is on the issue of full reliability. Uh, reliability, by definition, uh, is just uh, the consistency that you are just looking to what extent the, the, the test was consistent. That even if it's being uh, provided uh, to students, maybe two times could just bring the same results. That's why. Anastas, 1968, tried to define reliability as a consistency of score obtained by the same individual when re-examined with the test on different occasion or with a different set of equivalent item or under other variable examining condition. So we are just looking that the same test has been provided to the same individual but the result just remain the same. So if you find that you're just providing the test in the, in the first occasion, and then repeat the same exam in the second occasion, and then you find that there is a discrepancy in terms of performance, we can say that the test was not reliable. The test was not consistent. That's what is meant by word consistent. So, uh, another that you can just this always is one uh, that you may find that when we use any kind of tools, any device or tools to measure a certain trait, we expect that tools or device to provide us with the accurate or truthful results or evidence to make uh, any kind of decision. So if you find that you are just uh, coming with the test, and then the test, when you come up with another, another time, then they find that there is a discrepancy. We can say that we can judge that test was not uh, reliable. In short, just assume you are a teacher. You are teaching a certain topic, a certain subject. You come up with the results. Uh, we come up with the test, maybe in the term, terminal exam. They do a test, and then later on, you come up with in the, 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 maybe the terminal, and then you bring the same results in the annual. And then with the aim there, you need to check the result that will be obtained by the individual student in during the terminal exam will be the same with the annual exam. That's how to calculate what we call it. Uh, Co -co uh, consistency. So, but there is always one problem in doing that kind of uh, calculation or testing that things that one of the problem with that we, with one device or truth measurement, which may make us ask these questions, how the consistent are these results if we decide to take measurement of the same object or trait under the same condition or to what extent can it be is uh, real on the results. So if you are just looking at, okay, the same exam and then I, can't, I just administer that exam in different occasions with the same condition, this, the result will remain constant. So the process of doing so, that's what we mean reliability. Therefore, if that truth manage to bring the same results 
that we say is the test or a measurement tool or assessment tool is what? Consistent. Or therefore, reliability is one of the most important concepts in testing and the measurement in education and psychology. This concept can be used to indicate whether a test of measurement device can be can provide us with the same evidence or results when the same characteristics or traits in the measurement over and over again under the same condition. So that is what we mean uh, by definition. So I just looking about the consistency of the results, the consistency of the uh, of the early tools after being administered in different occasions, but bringing the same with that. So, let's take an example. You're just walking in the morning, and then you measure your weight. Just for measuring your weight, you find that maybe you, 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 are, you are just having uh, 70, 80 kilograms. And then after five minutes, you, you do the same procedure. You find that your 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 results, your 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 weight is about maybe seventy, or is 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 just rise up up to eighty. We may say that 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 measurement devices is not accurate. Why? Because it just bring the different results. Why only within a limit or uh, within a short limited of time? So we expect because of just having 78 after one hour, after two, two after one day, the, 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 the result should remain the same. If it remains the same, we say that, oh, that measurement device is consistent. Similar to education context. That's okay. You are just having, you are, you are teaching history, you come up with the test. There's the having maybe five questions. You give to the students, and then you mark, you get their results. And then after two days, you repeat the same exam. Then the result become the same. You may say that test is reliable because it just bring, it just tend to bring the consistency, the same results. It's not normal to be the, to be the same as mean that maybe if it is seventy it's supposed to be seventy. No, it could be, it could vary because there are factors within to affect reliability. But we don't like we need that discovery to be minimal in the sense that is you cannot see the difference. And then I'm going to see later on the calculation how now to wait, uh, at the end you can judge whether that 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 after calculating that result is consistent or not. So, in order now to determine how to, to determine whether the result, the, 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 the device or the result was consistent, we have different formula to calculate because we can't just calculate the consistency of the, of the result by using either you are using the same result, we call it test to test, or sometimes you are just using the one exam. But the same, one exam within the exam, you divide them. You may use what we call it, split up. You will come, sometimes you may use what we call it, equivalence. So we later on are going to see those types. But before going to those types, that you need to know that there are sometimes errors we tend to happen. It may affect the, what we call it, reliability, test reliability. We call it error. Then that error is that you see a small differences. Could be either caused by many factors. So, so before going in details to calculate and to know those types of reliability, it's better now understand that concept of error. That was well explained by that theory that we call it classical testing theory. Let's take an example. Assume that you have administered a test to a group of students and they have scored 67, 67, 80, 65, and 50. It means that you have, maybe I'll take an example, you have five students in your class. The first student scored 67, 
the second one again 67 the other one 80 the other one 65 and the other the last one 50. and then you administer the same test to the same group of students and that assume the uh, assume the constant condition we mean that the same condition if it is within the morning you just repeat the, the exam with them in the morning within if you just they have just done that they test within five or maybe one hour they're supposed to do the same exam the, 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 that, that again that exam within one hour so under the same condition and then you find that the result now have changed now you have 69 you have 66 you have 81 you have 67 you have eight uh, 48 so you, you see in the first student the first score was 67 and the second score it was 68 so that you find there is a difference there two marks but in the second student they said 67 and then 68 there is a, a, a decrease in terms of performance for one max so, uh, until respectively there's on that so if you observe this test score from the first and the second test administration you will see a small variance variance here we mean difference in test score which whether increase or decrease the score but is in a close range of score according to class now classical test theory uh, the score obtained after the test administration are referred as observed the score the score obtained after the test administration we call it observed the score why the variance of score of the results of yes. error which is always divergent a subject from obtaining the same score we call it a true ability or true score therefore under that idea of class score uh, test theory it means that observe the score or student score when we call it x how to obtain that observe the score it means that you take x is equal to t t that is the true score plus the error which is 24 e now for the theory here it is clear stated that any observed score or the test score pinned after the test being marked which is x is is the component of the true score or true it is the, the true ability of the subject in which is very theoretical and hypothetical than the practical because it's obtained practical and it is very difficult to be calculated mathematically however it can be estimated after subjects took tests many times to identify t and the error of measurement which is e which uh, always prevent uh, prevent us from our true ability or true test now let's go to the clear example that's you have provided a test to a student you have marked that and then you have results that results that's what we call it observe this score the score that you took at the first uh, 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 for the first time we call it observed or true score and it's 24 x so how now to calculate that one to get the concept of variance it means that you take the second score after the first score we have really administered little the mark and then you give the exact the, the result the, 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 the test to the student the same test when you mark it again that's the result of the second score of the second uh, of the second of the of the kind of administration we call it true score and then you find the differences and how to get the differences which is error you take either you take the, 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 the result of x minus the result of what of four, of t you get the, the summation of what of e if so now if you get that result now the, the answer of that result that's what we mean it variance so variance by definition now you may see that the variance is just 
to the discrepancies that tend to happen between the first, the, the, the observed score plus the true score plus, uh, is equal, I mean that the observed score is equal to the, 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 the variance of true score, of the scanning score plus the variance of error. That's the, 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 what you call the variance observed. Together, so variance here we are just looking to what extent the the the, the, the score varies from one from the uh, comparing the first occasion and second occasion. That's what we mean with variance. So if the first student the the first administration was having sixty seven, and the second one the second uh, only administration the second time is having sixty nine, the difference is two. So that's true now, we need to quantify it to get what we call it, in, which will be what? Variance. And that is, has been a big impact in determining the consistency of the test. Why? Because we are just looking how now that difference come inside. What the fact that tend to contribute that things to happen. Together, that's why here, by definition of our defining that formula, it means that observe the score means student a score a student actually obtained. And then the true score, a score a student of, should get if the measurement device worked perfectly. And the error is known as also as measurement error is uh, anything that caused the student to observe, uh, observe the score to differ from his true score. That's with having 67 at the beginning. And then if they've done the second time, we have 69. What the reason behind for these changes? Those are what you mean factors which tell us evaluation, error, variance. So something important to be remembered in that is that error of measurement can be either be systematic or random. It's not necessary to be the same that okay, the error now if it is two, it should be two. No, it could change. So, what the reason may go that change to happen? We call it source of error. One is individual effects. Categorized individual effects here, we mean sources of error related to the individual that can cause the person to score other than what he should score. This can be a result of any personal issue that can result to student score other than expected, like illness, stress, depression, medication, sleepness, test anxiety, and so forth. Yes, you have a good example of living from yourself. Why, why do you come up? You find that you are just sitting in the exam, but you go, you get poor results. You are it may be a material. Always getting A from different causes. But you have entered in the course, you find that, oh, oh, now instead of getting A, now you have a B plus. Your teacher may ask themselves, why this dropout? So the reason of, the, of, of failure could be of individual error, or we call it individual effect. Why? Because maybe in that time, you're not feeling well. Maybe that time, you just have, you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are you are just having stress. You have stress either from home. All oh, those who are just getting fiancé, you have you, you have a misunderstanding with your fiancé. So you are so stressed, and then you are entering the exam. Like you may find that there is the slight changes in terms of performance because of what we call it individual effect or subject effect. Another causes of error could be test effect. Test effect here, we are just looking about the, the test itself. The test if itself or not ways. The, uh, the, maybe, for, for instance, the ambiguous the, uh, instruction. That's, you find that attempt all questions in this, uh, in, this, in, the, in this test, and then that's the general, maybe, instruction. But unfortunately, when you, you are just answering the whole question, you find that later on teacher telling you, oh, you are supposed to answer only four questions out of five. But the instruction was not clear. So the instruction sometimes could be clear, 
the economic rear and then cause that what we call test effect, cause either poor performance, cause that what we call it error, error, uh, various error, meaning that it may just come up with a different result performance because of the instruction. Or sometimes the, 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 the terminology used in the test. You find that you are, need to assess a certain, a certain things, but you just come up with, with the, the wording system, which is not clear to them. Come up with the bombastic, which is not clear to the student. Of course, that changes in terms of performance. May affect consistency to individual consistency in terms of performance. Sometimes confusions of test items. You know what about when you talk about the test item, I mean the, 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 how the question was formulated. Could be either subjective or objective, or that within the objective, you know, there's multiple choice, there's matching item, the true or false, but the way the item was formulated is tend to confuse the student. Sometimes pre printing and the and the critical errors. Find that the, the paper was just pre the, the, having error in terms of printing. It may cause the the the, the variance, the, the, the inconsistency of the result, of individual results. Another thing is reflecting test effect in the appropriate coverage of the material. In the appropriate or inadequate. Maybe you have just teaching maybe five topics. And then you go to concentrate on a single topic. You find that maybe 70% of the test is just relying on one, on one topic. So yes, they assume someone, maybe uh, that person was not, not very good on that one topic. So I may score uh, the, the battles are, by, by, by battles that's because of the inconsistency of the coverage. Together, or some, uh, the, the, so those factors which is associated, it's connected to test itself, we call it test effect as one of the sources of error in, manage, in, in measurement. Another factor may cause error is environmental effect. Are all those sources of error as a result of test environment? The class environment, the environmental factors, the classroom where the test, the, the way to conduct the test is not favorable, it's not, it's not uh, conducive for, for, for students to take a test. Find that maybe the poor writing, uh, writing, uh, writing during the test. There's no, 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 no ventilation. There is environmental noises. We call it environmental, uh, environmental uh, noise pollution. You are just, the school is very close to the, the, the clubs. They're just a lot of noises of music. And that's why you find that one of the police in Tanzania, wherever you can maybe club around the school, first of all, they're not allowed to have the clubs, uh, those entertainment clubs within the, around this uh, very close to school. But if it's there, you're not allowed until students are not in schools. So sometimes you may find that you're just doing a test, but a lot of noises outside may affect you. They may just cause error when you compare, maybe in the first, um, uh, test administration, you're just there. The area was so comfortable, no noises. But when you come to the second time, you find the area related, having a lot of noises may affect your results. And then you find that there is the error in terms of either decreasing performance because of noises, sometimes uncomfortable room temperature, too hot. Sometimes, you know. And the white tent, you are just doing the test, and then all the time you are just doing like this one. Why? Because uh, uh, of the of the temperature. So the temperature is supposed to be in the, in the, in the, in the optimum, in the optimum, in the optimum. That's not so hot, not so cold. So you can just do it some comfortably. But assume you have just done the exam with high temperature. And then make sure that if you need now to, do, to check the consistency of the test, because you cannot just do consistency of the test by using only the only, uh, only one uh, first occasion, make sure that even in the second occasion, just make sure that the environments are the same. 
if it was that they've done in the first occasion with high template, even the second occasion, it's possible to do it in high template. So as well, you can come up with judgment whether the test was consistent or not. And, it, and if there is some what we call the discrepancy now, that's where I can just try to check the sources of that error. Uh, another, so therefore, reliability, because we are just looking consistency, is obtained by that reliability is equal to variance, true variance over variance observed. You remember here, we've just talked about what is uh, variance observed and what is variance, uh, true variance. So observed variance, as observed variance, it means that you, you are just, it's just calculated by variance, true, is equal to uh, true variance plus variance, uh, error, uh, variance error. So if you have already obtained that one now, that's where you can be in the position of calculating the ability. That the ability is equal to variance, a true variance, divide by variance of observed. But don't be worried. That's, you may, you know, we are just saying the formula in the theoretical, but in the session, we are going to have a small session. In the, I, I think we're going to use the uh, Imam Shafi. So we are going to be in a group of uh, 200 students at a time, or 150 students, and they're going to divide you, are going to be based on your time, we're going to, to attend those sessions you're going to see the calculation. How now do we can going to calculate the, 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 the true variance? How do we calculate the variance observed so as we can get the reliability? So don't worry by looking at the formula, then you, make, you get confused. You know? I'm going to either myself or I'm going to invite Dr. Jamal, will be there teaching you, and you see those how to calculate uh, practically. At the same time, you're going to invent small groups making exercise, helping the little small groups. And then if you have challenges, you're just you're supposed to attend in the office, we calculate, and then you see the connection. And remember the aim here is not the issue of calculating. The aim is to see how you know those now idea, those uh, mathematical idea is important for us as educationists to judge our results, to judge either the test was consistent or not. So, by definition, how do we need to define that in formula now? If a test score remains consistent over time, this is referred to as reliability. So, if the results remain consistent over a time, that's what we just done with the first time, the second time, the result is the same. We say that, oh, that test is reliable. If students perform equally well, on various form of the same test, the test is displaying alternative form of reliability. Equally, we call it alternative form of reliability. We're going to see that on the types. And then if various items on a test are all measuring the same skill, skills, the test is displaying the internal consistency and ability. So you have seen, if generally, the result remain the same. That is what we mean reliability. But on the same idea, the student perform equally altogether on various form of the same test. Various form, it means that you are giving them a, the, 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 the same test, but alternatively in different forms. So if you are just comparing those kind of tests, we call it that approach as an alternative form of reliability. And at the same time, if the test is all measuring the same skills, so measuring the same skills, displaying what we call the internal consistency, but later on, we are going to see those types in detail. So how now error? Because you see there, how to calculate the error now? Error by definition is equal to observed score minus the true score. That you have done your, your score maybe 67, 
for the first cashier, which is observe the score. And then for the second administration, uh, administering of the test, you have scored uh, 69. It means that to obtain now error, you take X, which is error, is equal to uh, error, A E, which is error, minus, uh, is equal to X, observed one, which is 67, minus 69, you are going to get negative two. That negative two, that what we mean is error. So the calculation is so simple in that idea, but it has implication later on in the detailed uh, uh, on when it comes to, uh, to calculate in detail different types of reliability. But that's so simple. You may even, 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 even if you have mathematics phobia, it's easy. If you just see the amount of just looking, which result is, is for observed this score and which is that is for true score. And then you take the score of the or observed one minus the score of the true score, which is just be uh, obtained after the second, uh, at the second administration of the test. So let's go to the part of types of reliability. Types of reliability. Uh, we have several types. Here, you see uh, that we, we are going to see four of them. But in other uh, books, you may find that three. What they do is that they, there is test retest reliability. And then there is a split a half reliability. And then there is parallel reliability. In the parallel reliability, that's where you find the alternative or equivalent reliability. And so therefore, and then you find that they, what we call it internal consistent reliability. So in alternative or equivalent reliability, sometimes you may find the word parallel reliability. So let's go one by one. What is it? First of all, you need to know the general picture of that idea. And then from there, you may, you may later on see how to calculate and determine what we call, uh, what we call test, test, test reliability, the consistency of the test. Test, 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 test reliability, by general idea, before give, give going into details, is that you are, you are just, maybe assume you are, a test. you are just having, a, you are teaching, let's assume uh, biology. Oh, yeah, let's use a geography because I may just fail to come up with an example in biology. You are teaching geography form two. So you have covered all topics, for instance, of form two. You come up with a test with uh, considering the format of national examination, form two national examination. And then you have uh, marked it and then you have a uh, results. But you need to check the test. If you give them the same test under the same circumstance, the result will remain the same or not. So maybe after two days, after you don't have because you are not take you are not supposed to take short time or long time. Maybe after one hour, or after after one month or one week, and then you give the same test. If you do so. That kind of kind of determining consistency, we call it testing, testing reliability. Because you are just using the same test to the same student. And I remember I used that kind of approach in my master's degree. I was just uh, uh, focusing on the uh, on the idea of. Uh, making comparison in, in terms of student performance, reflecting a uh, learner centered approach and, and, and teacher centered and the student uh, teacher centered approach and learner centered approach in, in, uh, in, in, in comparison to student performance. So, what I did, I just prepared a test of practical geography. I went to school A and school B. One of the schools, school A, was a um, well, we call it experimental school, and school B was controlled school. So I, I give that test to the students. They did the exam, and then I marked that result. But I didn't I did give, give them the, 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 the results. So we took almost two months. One school A, which is experimental school, being taught by using renaissance centered approach, and school B, 
being taught by teacher centers approach. Later on, we give them, we just give, give that back, the same test to the students. Together, and then the results, we try now to compare. On that point, the issue was comparing the methodology of teaching. But in the, on that idea of test and test, now we can compare the result of school A and school A again, again, the same school. And the result of school B and school B, the same, the, the same students. Now to check if the test was consistent, bring the consistency or not. So in the school context, you are, we, we tend to recommend to use this uh, short time. That the same exam, you then and then you you you, you give you give them, you give them they do it after one week and they repeat the same test. I did even one 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 of the of the exam here at the University of Morocco for supplementary. I did. I just repeat the same exam with a little changes to check will be a consistency. Those who have squad the supplemental, they will be, remain the same squad in supplemental. You see that oh, these are well and they are shakily before used. The same result. Some of the few of them managed to change with the slight changes. We call it error. So, uh, in detail explanation about test of test, that one of the most popular way of estimating the test is stability or reliability or consistency is to administer a test to a group of subjects and then retake the same test after a while of one, two, three weeks after the first administration. Then you calculate the correlation coefficient. Yeah, correlation coefficient, we are just looking how now they are correlated, how the, the, the those you know, that are correlated. And to use which kind of, of formula now we can use is what we call it Pearson product moment reliability. That's between the two test results, the first administration and the second. So you correlate, you check, is there a correlation? So in, when you are just using test to test, it means that the correct formula to use to determine the reliability is Pearson product moment reliability. So, but you need to understand that, okay, you may use Pearson product moment reliability and then you come up with the results, but you need to know that there is some intervening variable that can cause ch the changes. That the problem that could, could, uh, could, this uh, could just affect that procedure are most associated with human memory and the instability of human characteristics by a period of time. Because you've just said you're within one, week to three week. So because we are human beings, we tend to memorize. How together? So you may find that you, you after one week, you are still remembering, okay, I put A. Even if it's not correct, but you remember, that question I put A. So you mean putting A, what is not correct. So the factor is that of human memory, that after the group of subjects to the first test is always a big challenge to estimate when they should sit for the second test because we don't know exactly if it is too soon or later for the subject to remember the question and how they answer that first test. Therefore, there is always a disagreement of puzzles that exact amount of time needed to give the students of the, uh, the subject the second test. Based on that human memory, it's still the, it, it is still the debate for how long we're supposed to take. Is it one week? You cannot remember that what things have done in one week. And if you take, if we just make it too long, it also will bring a problem. So that's one of the factors that may affect that thing. Another one is the instability of human characteristics over a period of time. That's another trouble with this procedure of estimating reliability is in stability of human traits or characteristics over a period of time. Therefore, for unstable psychological traits like human personality, this we pro, uh, produ, uh, this produce will not provide us with the precise reliability because human traits change over time. 
However, as a variable like psychological condition of the subject, motivation, sadness, happiness, variables may affect whether changes and other things may affect, but human beings are instable. The way you are motivated to do exam today is not to be the same as tomorrow. You may find today maybe you are motivated to later to do exam, but tomorrow, different things. So you may find that's what that's one of the challenges of using test test method by using that method of uh, by using that method of Pearson product moment liability. So uh, you are you are the teacher. What you're supposed to do is that no way out. The formula is there. What you're supposed to do is to to check how to to, to the, the things will happen. But what things to consider is that therefore under this condition to estimate a rabbit may be very difficult. Basing on that difficultness, that's why they just come up, those scholars, they just come up with the second types of rabbit to remove that kind of error of human memory and the personality, human personality characteristics. So how to avoid those things? That's where it comes to the second type of uh, calculating reliability. And you call it uh, alternate or equivalent formal reliability. That's, it tends to, 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 to deal with the uh, drawbacks of the test and test reliability procedure. So, scholar try to develop another technique, which is to estimate liability without retaking the same test or without administering the same test twice. So under this alternative or equivalent form of liability, you are not doing, you are not repeating the same test within different time. That's as you say that we don't take retaking the same test or we don't really administering the same test twice. This procedure of alternate or equivalent involve preparing two equivalent form of test of test and they administer them at once at the same time by dividing the subject into two groups that's what you do but a little bit is very complicated it means that you are having the test test is going to cover both objective and subjective test so you can you you prepare a test and then you have two categories test a and test b so if you prepare maybe a multiple choice question from solar system they say you prepare the first question and then you prepare the same question the the, the, the second the, the, the second question for category b from solar system what we need we need that the the all test items should be equal Measuring the same skills, measuring the same, and then the, having the, the, the same level of difficultness. Remember those levels of, 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 of uh, cognitive developments. Don't just come up with the question of knowledge as question one in test A, and then you come up with the question of evaluation in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the category B. No, we need, if it is knowledge, assess knowledge in those two papers with the same this question, same first question item. So then after the test elimination and making two groups are compared by calculating correlation coefficient. You see? It means that you have if even if the questions maybe the total questions are 25. It means that we have 25 in A and then you have 25 in category B. So you give that test to the student because they are the same, they have the same uh, weight. And then after that, you mark. And when you mark, it means that you now do need to, cal to calculate what you call Pearson correlation coefficient. If the two tests correlate, this means that the test is reliable. And if it's not correlate, it means that the test was not reliable. Although this procedure, looks simple but it's very complex than the previous due to the assumption that the test item from the two alternative or equivalent should be equal 
in its level of difficulty, which is very theoretical and difficult to be estimated. Because you may say that that is simple and that is all. But you find that, oh, it is not simple. And the other A, maybe category A is complicated, category B is so simple. And that's where now you, you, you are always demanding or uh, one of the weaknesses of panel, of panel assessment. You are entering the panel, the grade is the same, it is 10 marks. You find you are just picking the simple question and the other one come up with pick the complicated question. And then it does, it does taking the same course. Someone gets four out of 10 because you just find that you just uh, picked a complicated question. And then the other, uh, the other one get 10 over 10 because they just find the question so simple. Can you please mention types of measurement? So simple. To me, they're going to automation. One, two, three, four. While the other one find the question, can you please, with the example, show the demarcation of differences between eva a, evaluate, uh, uh, evaluation as learning, evaluation for learning, and the evaluation of learning. You see, that question is very complicated compared to the other, the, 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 the first question. So you find that you, are, you cannot compare now in terms of student performance. When then they look about the consistency. No. Why? Because the nature of the questions are not the same. So in equivalent, you need to make sure that the questions are balancing the level of difficulty. Even though it's very complicated. If you need to come up with that kind of approach, it means that why preparing the test? Prepare the test at the same time. You have in she, you have a, you're just having two parts, two parts, part A, part, part A, and part B, to mean exam one, exam two. But when you prepare question number one in that time, also prepare the same from the same content. You prepare another question number one to the calendar, to the to, to group B. If you do so, you will manage that things. Otherwise, you may find that you are coming with the test, but the test itself is not reliable because the questions are not holding the same difficulties. And some lecturer, here, even here at the university, you may find that you are just doing maybe a single, one exam, communication skills, but different questions. You find that line having the, the only question, the, the only exam, the other one having the only exam. The, do you see? But that's not a problem. But the problem will come is the exam A. Those are in line A, and those are in line B. Are they, the, the exam, are they? holding the same weight or not. Another thing to challenge that approach, the two equivalent tests should have the same number of items. That's another thing to consider. The same number of items. If it is 25 questions, make sure that even in the another take test is 25 questions. Another thing to consider is that the item should be measured the same day domain at the same level of difficulty, as I already mentioned. The same domain and the same level of difficulty. You are just measuring cognitive, concentrating cognitive. And then you are measuring knowledge. Make sure that is knowledge in both questions, or question paper. And the test must have been drawn from the same content. If it is solar system, question number one is solar system. Make sure that even question number one in paper one, paper two, is from a solar system. Don't mix them. Due to these complexities, that is why alternative form of equip or alternative uh, form or equivalent form are not used in teachers' made test. It is very rare to find them using them in schools. And that's the normal exam that we tend to use the classroom test. Instead, they are mostly used in, standard, in standard, standardized test industries. Since no more teacher does not have enough time to develop equivalent form of test and give to the student just to check the reliability. So that's one of the, of the challenges that work. Based on that challenge now, read to the, uh, the, 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 the suggestion of this, the third type of reliability calculating reliability, and that we call it spirit to have reliability. 
So in spiritual availability, you've seen the first one, that's testy, testy. You are using the same test, but that being administered twice to the same student under, under the same condition. But in the, 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 the alternate, alter, alternative or parallel or equivalent reliability, we find that no, it's in a different test, but being prepared different type of test, two tests, but we considering that that's measuring the same content, the same domain, the same level, and the level of difficulties. But in the spirit of half, it means that you are having the same one test, but you calculate a uh, reliability. And that's what we call the internal consistency reliability. The same exam, and then you calculate there. Yeah. What you're supposed to do, you divide the papers in half, and then in that half, you take odd and even numbers of those question items, and then you calculate the ability. So, in this case, that is another way of estimating your ability, but it is mostly used when testing tests or producing equivalent form of tests are very expensive, and the actual is very expensive. Especially that alternative, a very expensive and a little bit time consuming, especially the uh, equivalent form of, 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 of testing. So, although it can be used also as to avoid all those discrepancies and the complicity mentioned earlier in test the test or in equivalent form of test. So, in this one, split the half is in that it somehow tend to minimize those challenges noted before. So, what is done there? In this procedure, is to is uh, uh, is what is to administer one test at once and in one group of subjects and then divide the test item into two halves, odd and even item, even with even item and likewise odd 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 with odd items. So, and then you can create the correlation coefficient. However, it may be very difficult if the test items are not having the same difficulty level. Let's take an example. You have, this is an exam. First of all, you need to take the result of the student and then divide them in a half. And then after dividing them in a half, and then you come to check the other questions and even questions. You see, that is question number one. Question number two, you know what is odd. You know what was even. Even the, 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 the item is going to be divided by two. All together. And the odd device is we cannot be divided by two. So, you, 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 after having the result of this tool, and then you need to check you, you, the, the, the performance in the odd question, question number one, Roman one, Roman three, Roman five, Roman seven, Roman 8, Roman 11, and then the, even now, you are just looking 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and then so forth until you finish the paper. So another problem under this kind of, 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 of calculating reliability is that uh, with this procedure, when you divide the test item, the number of items get reduced. For instance, the test was having 50 items. And in Maswali, I see. If you divide them into halves, it means that we are going to remain with only 25 items. So you are going to deal with only 25 items, not 50, because you need to divide them in a half. Therefore, to reduce, uh, to reduce uh, in reducing this effect of split the half, we use Spearman Broom Prophet's formula. Spearman Broom Prophet's formula. How now? It means that you calculate the error. That total test coefficient correlation is equal to two times error, which is R on the, on, on the top. It means that it is coefficient correlation of speed and half over one plus error. Let's take an example. 
that's a, a general idea you're going to see in, in the calculation you have a number there and then you know how to, to, to divide them with a half and then you calculate get the r you're going to see later take an example assume you have estimated that the test coefficient liability to be that's r to be 70 0 0.75 and then you want to co to collect the speed that I have by using the formula provided above, which is R is equal to two times R over one plus R. So the solution we have, it means that to get now R, which is a half of us, is 20, 0 0.75, it will be easy. You take two times 0 0.75 over one plus 0 0.75 you're going to get 1.5 over 1.75 and then you're going to get 0 0.857 which is equivalent only to f or you f approximate you're going to get 0 0.9 so the point here the that's 0 0.9 imply what as i told you before that we are not we are not here to we are not teaching you that kind of you know, that, 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 that concept are the mathematics we need to know how we can use those arithmetic ideas in education purpose. So you need to know how to interpret that one. That's why there is a scale. That's if you get the answer from zero to one or from negative to one, they have implication. We will see those cases later on. So after said before, as we've said, that's uh, the reliability after correct, correcting the, the speed, the half is zero point nine together so predicted reliability in this item for casting so how do we do it as we said before test reliability is among the most important concepts in the field of education and psychology testing and measurement however testing uh, however testing professional can 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 do more than estimating liabilities by even predicting the test liability by increasing the number of items after calculating their initial liability. That's it. We are just looking those items, how the item, the test itself was consistent. The question number one and question number two, they have connection. How that connection is the question which is on basing on that one, three, five, seven. Nine and the question which stand for two, four, six, eight. Is there a correlation? Is there a consistency? Together, that's why we find another formula now that we can use now to determine that things of spirit are that to determine that one, it means that uh current reliability. Current reliability, you mean it means that. Uh, coefficient correlation of the current test that you take is equal to n and the n here is stand for number of number of items number of, or, 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 of of times combined to the indicated number of, of factor which uh, the length of the test increase so here it means that to get r it means that you take n times reliability, current reliability, over one plus brackets, n minus one times r. So that's the thing. Uh, that's, it means that how to calculate it now. In that, we, if we are, we are not in the, in the poll, you need to use calculation just can see the connection. So you are going to read it on see how to calculate it in that small groups. But if you have a question, you really understand when you open, we open the type of, we open discussion later on because we are going to have a discussion in Telegram later on. You, you may ask that okay, I didn't understand that idea. So we can just give you a clear elaboration and then you can understand before the actual calculation in the smaller groups. That's a calculation that you're supposed to do, and then later on you're going to see answers. So The same, the same calculation that we're going to read later, we're going to, 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 to focus it later on there in the, 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 the small groups because you cannot understand the, those mathematics by just uh, speaking. And then another way to calculate liability is what you call the internal consistency of the test. 
looking at the internal consistency, how the test itself is having uh, is just having correlation. We call it internal consistency of the test. That is the liability method used to assess or judge the well-being of the item of test item claim to measure a certain uh, construct if they can produce consistent results. This means that how well all the item is reading in reading testing, which are claimed to measure the reading ability, can it produce consistent results if repeated more than once under the same subject and the condition. So we are just looking the same, the same, you're just having the aim a little, you are testing, you are just on the issue of reading ability. So if you provide that kind of test several times, the same test, altogether, it will, it, will, it will bring the same results. That's the same result that we call it, we call it internal consistency. And then even, there is an even formula. How to calculate that consistency of the test, internal consistency? Either we use what we call it Kuda, Richards, Kuda, Kuda Richardson. We have two formula there, KR20 and KR21. And the other one is Klobachi coefficient alpha. So those are formula that we can use to calculate consistency of the test. Later on, we're going to see, but the formula of KR20, you may see it here. That KR20, to calculate it, is so simple. You take the number of item, which is N over number of item minus one bracket, one minus summation of test takers, and proportion of the subject, test takers who answered the item correctly, that is P. Those who tend to answer the question correctly, you call it P. And those who tend to answer the question wrongly, incorrectly, we call it Q. So to calculate the consistency of the test, we take by using KR20, it means that you take the total number of item over number of total number of item minus one in bracket one minus summation of a proportion of those who get the, the item correctly times they also got the, the, the item wrongly divided by standard deviation which is s, s, s square so how to calculate the p there is a formula again how to calculate q there is a formula so don't be discouraged, but Q A S minus S S square S S square X is what you call it the variance. So it's a matter of calculating. And then the matter of just for substituting those ideas on the formula and then you come up with answers. But KR21, there is a difference there. That to calculate K R K R K21 is mean that you take total number of items over number total number of items minus one plus bracket one minus mean in bracket in the number of item which is n minus mean bracket over n times variance in bracket so you you may see formula as it is but later on you're going to come step by step putting having the result of students and then try to calculate it slowly slowly so they can understand but remember we are not here to teach you mathematics we need to check how those formulas, how we put those ideas, uh, those, the, the, the results, and then the results, that's what we need so as you can interpret. So that is how to use KR21. K, 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 K so you see there's examples here, you may just read it in advance, but how to calculate it, we're going to go slowly. How to use, uh, Robach alpha, that's why there is a formula again here, which need you to have a, a general idea of how to calculate variance and so forth and so forth. And then the other way or types of reliability is what we call internet reliability. As a first type, the, 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 third type, the fifth types of reliability, we call it internet reliability. It's another type of estimating the test reliability. This procedure is used mostly with open-ended test item. Open-ended 
test item. Together. So here, after administering the test, the marking procedure will involve more than reader or teachers, and then the result from the first marking and the second will be correlated using personal product moment correlation coefficient. That's okay. You are giving them the, the, the an open and subjective testing. We you are supposed to do now. We take the results together. You don't put mark there, and that's what we call maybe here. If you make uh, just the result is out and then you don't agree with the result, you may call it your nakatalufa. Nakatalufa, when you are working on a pair of two mungina and the kurima, a kurima is not good enough to do. So they want to find a comparison. That will be interrelated reliability. We need to check the consistency. Are you never our corner? Are you getting that? So there is a formula now that you can use to calculate that things. That's what we call Pearson product moment correlation coefficient. But it means that you have well results the other way. Maybe you have 50 students in your class. You take 50, maybe 25 papers for teacher A and 25 papers to teacher B. And then you take the results, the total results in terms of calculation and total result of, of teacher A and total, total result of teacher B. And then you make calculation very fast on product moment correlation coefficient to check the consistency in terms of marking. If there is consistency, we say that's okay. That was what it was good. So how now you have already having the result? How do we interpret? Why do we calculate that what we call the liability? So, so what? After having the result, that result imply what? That's what's important for us. The interpretation of the liability. That the, the, the test liability is very important when we might we want to judge the test itself and the item and, and its item. Because as we said, we sometimes you 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 involve in the, you adjusting the ability of the test in general. Sometimes you are just uh, uh, looking the ability of the item itself. So it helps us to understand how consistent the test is if we repeat the same test more than once by the same subject under the same condition. So calculating or estimating the reliability, test reliability is not enough. We need to know how reliability, how reliable the test is by looking how higher or lower the estimated reliability is. For instance, reliability, reliability coefficient, that you just involve, maybe you are just use, use the Kuda Richardson 2021 20, or Pearson uh, product moment, whatever the, the method of that we have used there. So, you are going to get the result, and the result actually should range from positive one to negative one. If you get uh, maybe the ability of two, know yourself that you are wrong. You get uh, some, some you reference that really they get the ability of 100, that's wrong. The answer should range from one positive one to negative one. So, this means that if the estimated ability is more than one, it is incorrect. Either one positive or one negative, it is incorrect. The, the difference point of interval is to judge the liability calculated where it start from 1 to 0 0.8 as higher, together, or, uh, or stronger liability. So maybe you have calculated and then you get one positive. You are going to say there is a stronger Post a stronger positive reliability. See, there is a stronger positive reliability between two tests or whatever the question is asking. What? And then, if it is negative, it will be the same. Just matter of adding negative. There is a negative stronger reliability between the two tests. And if it's sent from zero point eight to z to to a to so let's take it from seven to uh, let's seven to, to five. That is moderate. Here, if there's some, some sort of collection here, that's from one to eight, that's strong. From seven to five, that is moderate. And then from four so, to 
to uh, to law to to one uh, four to uh, sorry from one to zero point eight that is strong either positive or negative from zero point seven to zero point five that is moderate from zero point four to zero point one together that is low and then if it is zero it means that there is no what reliability there's no consistency no positive not negative no consistency and the actual is not happen so if although a strong or weak reliability it can be determined by the number of subjects set for the test item this means that you can have higher reliability of 0 0.9 but 15 subjects which can lead to another to not statistically significant uh, and the vice versa so it depends sometimes you may have the high number but it's not higher lacking higher reliability so that is a, the scale that scale can be in terms of uh, this small can be in terms of percentage then how that we are going to see later on in when it comes to the issue of calculation so you may ask yourself what factors that tend to influence the ability one the lens of the test is very important can as influence positively or negatively uh, another one is what we call it speed that's the way you're just doing the test, the time that will be given can affect it. And the other one is group homogeneity. That's another variable or factor which influences your ability, assuming another group remains constant in group homogeneity. It's very important to know that the homogeneity of groups lies the reliability. For instance, if you are just having the account of a group of students, Remember that it's the same group, it's with the same group. Otherwise, you may find that you come up with the uh, result which is not correct. And there is the way of calculating that uh, homogeneity of the groups. Test, test the content may affect consistency. Difficulty of, of items could affect consistency. And then we're going to later on to see how to calculate what we call the difficulty index. And Another thing is subject effect. You may read that so simple, uh, and the other factors you may read in the letter only come up with answers. So those have the idea of reliability. We are just looking to what extent the, the result is consistent, even if it's been administered twice to different groups with the same group, with the same group of students. The issue of objectivity. No calculation known is so simple, you may read and then come up with answers. With that point, please, let's end up here. As I told you before, that you are going to have, I'm going to send us, uh, uh, we are going to have a discussion on Telegram asking questions, a theoretical questions. You may ask even questions, and questions, of course, we can just give you answers. But how to calculate reliability is we're going to do it in the in the, in the seminar inshallah have a nice day let's meet in the in, in today's sessions in chat room uh, try to find answers if you have questions question and answers you're going to cover it in those uh uh that time of uh